I V M. Welcome to Football Shirt Ball with Golov, Karotek, and Shivas and Arata Rizumi. You know, it feels like we've been doing this a lot. Uh, once again, the voice you just heard was of Arata Izumi, one of the best players to grace the I League. He played a few seasons in the ISL as well, and one of India's superstars in the early 2010s. Shivram and I know him from our college days in Pune. Arata, welcome to Football Shirt Ball. We are big, big fans. Like I, I know you have a massive fan following in this country. We are also big, big fans. I just want to start with a small story. It, it was when I think Shivram and I studied together in Simbiosis in Pune, and okay. Balewadi was the closest ground to us. And I think we were commissioned to do a documentary on Pune Football Club. Mm-hmm. And that is when we came to the ground, and that is when we saw Arata Izumi. I think it was after your standout year in 2009-10. We came there in 2010. Mm-hmm. And we were like, wow, this guy is a superstar. He's an absolute superstar. Once again, from all of us here, we are so, so, so glad to have you on the show. Welcome to Football for All once again. We will give you an entertaining time for an hour, an hour or whatever time you can give us right now. Thanks. So, how's it going? You're, I think, are you in Mumbai now? How's it going with you, with your family? What's the scene like there? I know everything is shut down. Yeah. So after this COVID thing happened, I came back to Pune with my family. So okay. I'm with my yeah uh, family last one and a half month though. Oh, that's fantastic! But you're you're safe. Your family's safe. You're you're all at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good, all good. Thanks. Okay, excellent. So I think we'll start. We'll start with your early days because your your Wikipedia page itself tells a story in itself. So mm-hmm. you started playing football in Singapore. Is that right? Uh, well, uh, professional career. The proper professional contract. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was Singapore, but before that, I started my uh, professional thing. I mean, I was with the Lisbon team in Japan, the first division okay. club called Alvarez Niga at that time. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have that uh, proper professional contract, but the so-called trainee I was. Uh, so if you count that, I was participating in the second division, no, reserve team game. So if mm-hmm. you count that, my career. Started in Japan before Singapore. Yeah. yeah. So, so then you came into the S League and uh, Shivram. I don't know if you know this, but there is an article I found yesterday. I think it's archived and it says Arata Izumi is the fastest player in the S League. So <laughs> really? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So how yeah. how did that come about? How was that experience in in Singapore? Yeah, so it was uh, the team which uh, my club at that time uh, sent to Singapore. The all young players. For our experience, so we participated in Singapore League that year, and uh, we were uh, uh, all, we, the players are all Japanese, so you know it was a little bit different experience, I must say. Not like you know you are being foreign playing in Asian country and blah blah blah, but and the team is a Japanese team, so not much different that way. But of course the atmosphere and everything is different compared to Japan and Singapore. So, yeah, it was good experience, and also of course as I said, that was the first contact. Professional contract with professional club, so my dream came to season. Uh, I don't know what time, what age did you uh, get your first professional contract? How old were you? This was uh, 2005, right? So now I'm 37. So how many? 15 years back? Yeah, 15 so, years back. So that's 22. Yeah. 22, yeah. 22 wow. 22, somewhere there. Yeah. Pretty late, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, no, mm. that's the surprising part because not many would look at a pro- proper professional career in, 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 in football when, when you're at that age. Gaurav, you know, you keep saying the struggle is real. So th- this part will interest you and Arata's struggle has been real because after Singapore, you went back to Japan. I think you played for a club in the lower leagues. While working a full-time job with the same club, is that correct? Is Wikipedia right about this? Yeah, it's correct. It's a Mitsubishi, you know, car company. Mitsubishi. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that time, uh, Japanese league was first division, second division, and after that, there's a, a JFL, Japanese Football League, which is a top amateur level. There was no mm-hmm. J3 as of today. There's a J3, which is a, another professional uh, league, but that time it was not there. So the, my team was uh, participating in JFL. So every JFL club uh, with uh, some of the company, maybe Toyota, maybe Hitachi, maybe whichever the Honda, whichever the big big companies you can think of, definitely. So my club was one of it, and uh, Mitsubishi was one of the team, and I was playing them for them, and as well as I was working as uh, in the factory of Mitsubishi, so I was uh, coloring the car. Oh wow! Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, Gaurav, yeah, do you know it's, it's called Toso? 
like a person who paints cars is that right am i pronouncing it right yeah so so yeah, yeah. wow not at all i did so i i in fact arata i had done some japanese classes will shivram will attest to <laughs> yes. oh, that's nice yeah. i i i've already found an entry to put on karthik's uh, wikipedia page whenever it comes up <laughs> <laughs> yeah karthik did his um, level 1 and level 2 right No, only the first level, yeah. Then little laziness happened. I think Wikipedia <laughs> should have level two just for. <laughs> <laughs> and I just realized, and I, I did not mean this. I just realized I'm wearing my Tokyo T-shirt. I was in uh, Japan oh, yeah, earlier sorry. this earlier this year, and this I did not mean to be, uh, you know, patronizing, but it just happened to be so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that Chapre, that is so much of a lie, no? That he didn't plan this out. No yeah, way. because because I can only see the Tokyo part written. <laughs> <laughs> only thing you can see on his T-shirt, nothing else. But that, that's but, all but, right. But safe to say that is Shivram's. You were there, Shivram, on New Year's. Yes, yes, I was there on New Year's, and that's your favorite holiday destination. Absolutely, I know. absolutely, yeah. it was yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I love Japan. Beautiful place. Which city? Which city? You uh, were in we Tokyo were, only. Yeah, we spent all our five days in Tokyo. and we also uh, went to mount fuji for one day and it was okay. absolutely spectacular nice 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 i don't okay. think i can get enough of the ramen in tokyo no, so that's lovely but then arata how does it happen that now you're playing in the japanese football league this is 2006 how did the india india move happen i know that your father is indian and your mother is japanese so but then how did the okay. move happen how did you decide to come to this country so the thing is when i was playing in singapore the one Agents, so called agents, spoke to me about Indian football. Uh, if I'm interested in come to India and play, but that time, uh, I mean, we did. I, I didn't know anything about Indian football. I couldn't find any information about Indian football. And of course, it was first year for me as a professional. So I was asking my seniors, my coaches, mm-hmm. you know, and everyone told me, you know, basically, okay, better to be careful and to not believe so easily this and that. Now I understand what they mean to say, but that time, <laughs> you know, I'm just a newcomer and uh, I didn't have much uh, uh, option to mm-hmm. decide what is right and wrong. So I simply said, no, I'm not interested in. And same time, that time I was talking with other Singapore clubs, uh, local clubs to uh, to sign for next season. So I was more interested in that part because my girlfriend was in Singapore, you know, sort of thing. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then uh, I went back to Japan, and I didn't have any club. I went to Jerry clubs for trial. I was not successful, and uh, only Mitsubishi was there for my option. And that time, you know, I was just ready to go back to professional career. Yeah. So I was really working on. I was sending emails, uh, CV to video to all so-called FIFA agents. That time, you know, if you open FIFA dot com, you yeah. to get the information. <laughs> Yeah, so I tried every way possible, but not to get any good uh, uh, distinct response. And same guy suddenly, uh, same Indian guy spoke to me again. It's where am I and uh, what I'm doing? If I'm still interested in, mm-hmm. and that was a kind of a initiative from a Indian side for me to decide to come to India. But you ended up joining arguably one of the two biggest clubs in India. You came directly, and you're in East Bengal. Did, mm. did you know of them because? In 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 India, East Bengal Mohan Bagan is arguably the greatest, one of the greatest rivalries in the world. In fact, so did you know of the magnitude of the club that you were joining then, or did you only feel it once you came here? No, obviously, I, as I said, I started to collect the information from mm-hmm. this agent as well as uh, and I started to speak to the club person. Uh, obviously, I study about the club and I know the history of the club. I knew the supporters are crazy about the club and the biggest mm-hmm. club in 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 India. Uh, yeah, I knew all of this. So it's also you played in the last season of the National Football League, or what was then the National Football League before it transitioned mm-hmm. into the I League. And yeah. I know during that season, I'm not sure you would have played in the two Kolkata derbies, or at least one out of the two, both the East mm-hmm. Bengal. So how how were mm-hmm. those those matches like? Was that something? I'm sure that was something you had probably never experienced in your career so far in Singapore or in Japan. No, nah, no chance. I don't think you can experience that atmosphere. In any other country, I mean, maybe Brazil. The mm-hmm. uh, what is the stadium? I don't know the name of it. Yeah, well, Maracan, yeah, Maracan, Maracan. Ah, Maracana. 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 right, right, right. Yeah, I yeah. think when I played at the uh, derby, still, I think eighty, ninety thousand people. I think so. It's wow. not one lakh twenty so-called park stadium. Uh-huh. So everyone told me it's better than uh, compared to the other time. Then I was like, what is it better? <laughs> Unbelievable. Seriously, I mean, from I mean, just just one meter. You know the distance. I can't hear anything because of the, you know, people were 
Oh, yeah. Kita. The entire yeah, population the, of Singapore is 90,000. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you are football player, I'm sure you want to play that kind of game once in a lifetime. And mm-hmm. I was really lucky to play that game. That though, we could win the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, also, what I experienced, man. I mean, you know, kisses coming from less than I can center, you know. Everyone was amazing. Like, yeah. It's like poking <laughs> me, but I'm I like, I, I can't do anything, but still, yeah, I felt really so excited. I never forget that moment. No, you, we can we can literally see it, no, Gaurav, on, on Arata's face right now also. It's been, how many, 13, 14 years since that has happened and the emotion yeah. is still there. Like, like mm. on his... Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, can, I, I can feel he's not telling us something that happened in that match. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something that happened during the match which you are itching to tell us, but you can't tell us for some reason. I'm not going to push you. But how was that experience? Did you, did you, were, were you told beforehand that this is the kind of experience it's going to be and... And and that and you know you have to play through that or was it just uh, something that you weren't expecting at all? No, I mean my approach was same as a professional. I just took it one of the game, but I you know no matter how much I was told that this game is special, this game is special. Till you get into the game, you don't know what actually mm-hmm. is the meaning of them, right? Of course, they experience, so they know, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was something totally different that uh, what I experienced in that game. I mean, Full of excitement, full of, you know, in between, you know, you know, Derby, how it is. We forget football, right? After that, we become bum, 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 bum. So, which is, <laughs> you know, which, is, which is great, I mean, you know, football is all about passion, right? In the yeah. end, you know, we talk about tactical, tactical, this, that, 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 but, you know, come on, man. Sometimes it's good to play, like, bum, 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 bum. And, uh, yes. yeah, I could see the fire from uh, all players, especially local players, you know, Bengali yeah, yeah. Like that's game, that's uh, personally uh, my brand of football, so I really like that. <laughs> yeah, that that shows that shows uh, the the uh, the love of football, the potential of uh, this country, and I feel really good to see that. Uh, so now, now tell us one thing. Now, how does you were you spent one season at at Bengal in the final season mm. of the National Football League? Interestingly, guys, this was also Sunil Chetri's breakout season for mm. JCT. I think he was he was mm, voted player JCT. one of the player of the seasons at. Uh, JCT during that last season of the National Football League. Oh, sweet. Then, mm-hmm. then Arata, you switched to Mahindra, correct? Mm-hmm. You came, you played in Mumbai. So, how do transfers happen in the Indian system? Um, we're guessing it's not like in the European system where there's a fee, or is it in a very similar manner? No, no, not at all. It was uh, <laughs> interesting. I don't know how much I can talk. So, that year, Sporting Club go uh, with um, Churchill Brothers and uh, Mohammed and Sporting and uh, East Bengal and Mahindra. So these are the clubs which I was talking with. So I wanted to stay with uh, East Bengal, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes the negotiation doesn't go right in uh, yeah. this mm-hmm. way, that way. So first, I had to, you know, I had to choose one of five clubs, four clubs, five clubs, whatever it is. And uh, I simply decided whichever gives me the most, yeah. uh, which was yeah. uh, Mahindra United. And at that time, you know, Mahindra United was one of the best clubs in India. Mm-hmm. Most, like, kind of trusted club mm-hmm. eh? yeah in terms of management in terms of a lot of things so I thought that way also interesting and that they were offering me for two years that also was soothing with what I was looking for so which well, was yeah. uh, great for me so and and was so now uh, just to give you some context both Shivram and Gaurav sit in Mumbai Bombay and yes. I'm from Bangalore so was Mumbai a lure also for you? Because Mahindra is based there, you can play at the Cooperage. Was that a lure like to go? Because Mumbai is arguably the city to live in if you're firstly if you're coming to India, right? Like everyone would have told you you have to go to Bombay. Was was that a lure? No, that knowledge was not there. No? I, I didn't know anything about Mumbai, yeah. Well, that, that's, yeah. that's that's surprising. I thought everyone would usually always say, go to Bombay, go to Bombay. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you, when I came to India, I couldn't speak English. No? So mm-hmm. probably people told me, but I could not understand. <laughs> <laughs> really, literally, I couldn't speak. So did you uh, pick up the language while you were in India? From Singapore, but uh, yeah, definitely in India. After seeing, I mean, meeting my wife, uh, yeah. that was... Uh, that was everything. Otherwise, I could not speak uh, English. So wow, wow. But, but we must say your English is damn good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> no, 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 thanks, thanks. You yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. I thought like, like you may have learned in Japan, like Shivram or in Singapore as well. Yeah, but no, anyway, and you won the Durant Cup with Mahindra. Is that correct? Was that your pro- first professional trophy in, yeah. in, your, in your professional career? It would have been, right? Like, uh, I believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So how was that, that feeling? Now, every athlete, at the end of the day, we, we want to win. 
So how was that when you're finally you've reached the stage of where you can go and you can lift lift a trophy? I'm sure that feeling for any professional sportsman must must be like unparalleled, especially when it's your first. Uh, the thing is, is I mean, it was great. I, 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 it was I was happy, but it's a Jiran Cup, you know what? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, I, all, all due respect, it's a huge uh, tournament and it's a really a uh, historical tournament and uh, it's, it's fantastic tournament. But of course, the target is always ID. That time, the Federation Cup, you know. So it was kind of prepared. Moment, right? We are preparing for the yeah ID go the Federation Cup, so the excitement was there. But uh, like, okay, good. That kind of expi- excitement, not like like a we made it or or, yeah. or yeah. I made it or like we. I don't know other players. I don't know what. <laughs> so so Shivram, you don't want Arata saying like this is like when Arsenal awesome celebrated the, Cup. the Emirates Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Though the Emirates <laughs> Cup, not with the <laughs> FA Cup. <laughs> this I is exactly what I <laughs> to say. Rada, I'm an Arsenal fan, and uh, Sapre is uh, Gaurav is a Manchester United fan, and Karthik is a Fulham fan. So let oh, me okay. just repeat that: he's a Fulham fan. I'm not sure <laughs> if you got it right the first time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so anyway, we'll we'll go to now. Arguably, what at least what we consider, and I'm sure what you consider, it, you it's very close to your heart. The best moments of your career. Now, in 2009, you switched to Pune Football Club. Uh, you and I think uh, Coach Derek Pereira also went there at at the same time, and I'm guessing it was it was part of him going there that you also moved to the club. How did that come about? Hmm. Again, a lot of things have to be off the record when I, if I have to talk the story mm-hmm. about this. So best not to talk, I guess. But uh, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, uh, see, every newspaper, say, every media said uh, Derek Coach went, so Arata uh-huh. also went. That was a story. But it was oh, not. Okay. Trust me, it was not. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, no, so, yeah. so at, least that, at least that myth is busted, which is good to know. Yeah, but you know, player, coaches, sometimes there's a bam, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. Happy moment, unhappy moment. It's normal, professional. Yeah. But after that, anyway, we became together again. From Mahindra to correct, uh, and uh, I think we had a great uh, four years uh, uh, together. Uh, I think we we could have achieved something bigger than that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we could not. But I think we tried our best. Uh, Derek coach me, some of the senior coaches, Banki, maybe falling out and Tufu. Yeah. This and, was uh, the same time Chirag uh, Tanna was at Pune FC. Uh, of course, of yeah. course, Chirag was always yeah, He was always nice to me. I mean, he is nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Doctor Ashok. Ah, uh, nice gentleman. We are always. I mean, everyone was love. Uh, they, they love football, man. They love football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Chirag uh, built Pune from the ground up, right? And then he's now with Reliance. Yeah, he's with Reliance now. He's a nice guy, though. Very gentle guy. So, and it was the first season at uh, Pune Football Club where. You really, really made your name. I think that there were like plenty of goals, plenty of assists in that in that mm. season of the I League. Uh, I'm sure you were voted in the team of the year. I think Goal.com named you the best player mm. of that yeah. season as well. And that, that that was a breakout season. And following that season, it was when I think both Shivram and I joined college in Pune. And when we came to Pune Football Club, and like you guys, you need to see this player. Did the talk of you playing, switching nationalities and playing for India start then? Actual process started uh, 2011, I think. If I'm not wrong. Did mm-hmm. I change 2013 or 12? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It means that I started my uh, process 2012. But, it took but 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 in terms of your own mindset, like uh, so this was a little bit the tricky one. So since I came to India 2007, like for East Bengal, so there was already talk. Around me, that like, if Arata is uh, eligible to play for Indian national team mm-hmm. or not, but I was PIO that time. Correct. So no, no one knew that the PIO can play or not. And uh, of course, in fact, you cannot play as a PIO, but okay. you have to be a citizen of India. Yeah? So then the talk was always there, but uh, when it's uh, 2012, right? 2011, mm-hmm. I think a PIO quota is gone from my league, and I played as a foreigner one year. And after that, my agent that time, uh, the British guy, he uh, told me if I want to uh, think about changing my citizenship seriously to play for India. So that was a thing that I actually started to think to find out the process how to do and whatsoever. Yeah, and also at this stage, I think uh, even in India, we were 
there was there was a lot of talk even before you that whether Michael Chopra can come and play for mm. India. I think he mm. used to play in the Premier League at that time. So this was mm. at a time where I don't know. I, I mean, it's probably rude to say, but there was this obsession of getting someone who has a foreign background to come and play for mm. the country. So uh, there was there was a lot of talk. I think Michael Chopra was one. There was Vikas Doras who had done well Dorasu, a few World mm. Cups. World the Cups ago. He yeah. was doing well in Europe also at that time for Lyon. So there, there was a lot of talk of whether these guys will come to India. And you were the first. So mm. it took you, I think, a couple of years to get to get your citizenship in place. And I think India doesn't allow dual citizenship. Is that correct? No, so you have to give up no. your Japanese passport and, yeah. and, and, and take an Indian passport. And then you finally, I think, the 2013 played for the national team. It was under Wim Kovermans. Mm-hmm. How, how how does that call ups happen? Like, does he literally take up the phone, pick up the phone, and say, "Arana, no, 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 you're no. in," or you read it online like the rest of us? How does that happen? <laughs> uh, no, brother. Everyone thinks of a. Uh, I, mean, I was expecting some dramatic uh, call up from the national <laughs> yeah. team, nothing like that. One day I woke up, I just went through AIFF uh, website, I saw my name in the next camp. I'm like, oh, what? "Wow!" Okay. <laughs> this way I have to come to know. I was hoping that someone called me and Arata, you. Yeah. This is like my exam results. <laughs> yeah, that's my owner. Not in but uh, yeah, but still, it was nice. I mean, when coach was really nice to call me up. And uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then you were a, mm. at, in that entire 2013 30, 13 season for India. You were, mm. a, you were a constant, I think, in the national team. And of course, there was that famous, or shall I say, infamous SAF championships. Where, mm. what I remember... Going in, we went as favourites because mm. we were defending champions. Mm. But I think the moment the game started happening, uh, Afghanistan looked like a really good side. Like, like let's be honest, they they, mm. they did look good from the start. And mm. India then lost to Afghanistan in the final, in in, in a big final. For us, mm. obviously, at that age, we're not we're not journalists as we are now, and we weren't mm. we were observing it as fans. So there was a lot of mm. I think angst towards the Indian team, like we're falling down mm. rather than going up. Was that the feeling mm. in the in the camp as well? Mm. Oh, I'm not so sure, but uh, see, of course, I mean, uh, simply Afghanistan was a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, we played, I, I, we tried, tried, tried our best, but uh, they were better. The goalkeeper, wow, what a fantastic yeah. goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah some of, uh, imagine, I mean, he, he, he played for in, in India, man. He plays ESL. So there you are. Tell me, which Indian player is playing in other Asian country as a foreign player? Yeah, no. that is true. Yeah, that 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 itself shows everything, isn't it? Yeah. So I understand some expectation towards the senior Indian national team, and I, I'm very much supportive of Indian national. I myself play for India, and yeah. I love this country. I love the team. But uh, you know, you got to be able to think logically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that 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 uh, South Cup also against Maldives also we struggled like a hell. Mm. They mm. had a one super striker number seven. I don't know his name. I think number seven. What a striker! And the one midfielder. I was man to man to him. Uh, the red hair, big mm. hair, very good midfielder. But uh, you don't find that kind of player. But uh, somehow as a team, you know what best in India football that time was. We work really hard. I mean, everyone work really hard. If mm-hmm. We see their game. They work really hard, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. They, they, they do. Yeah, they, do. they really work hard. Yeah, why? Because we are not as good as other countries' players. As simple as that. Yeah, but that hard working is there. So somehow we made it to finals, but the finals opponent was slightly better. So that's all. So you, you use that hard work to make up for maybe if another player is more talented than you are. like like it, it, And it works. And to be fair, we were discussing this the other day also, the three of us. In the Asian Cup, it worked for us for one and a half games. And then in, in the 2019, and then the next one and a half games, it obviously didn't. Like if, if you yeah. call as that, it didn't. And unfortunately, we were knocked out. I love the honesty though. Thank you. Yeah, no, I really it's, it's appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Arata, uh, yeah, so in this entire national team experience, you played around, but was it, about nine to ten games for 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 the country mm. over that yeah I think so yeah over that games, year, think. year year and a half so how was the entire experience something you regret maybe that you didn't join the national team sooner or you couldn't not that you didn't because obviously you couldn't so is, is no, it, if I have one regret then the, I didn't make myself uh, uh, I didn't prepare myself well to uh, be part of national team the gravity of being national team player was something far bigger than what what I was. Uh, Imagining, you know, okay. I mean, yeah, you, you think about it, man. I can't even speak Hindi, man. Mm-hmm. Come on, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's 
if I have to look back to it, well, I don't know why I didn't study my Hindi. I, mm. you know, that itself shows this is a team game. And if you want to get into the team, you got mm-hmm. to be gel with others in, a, you know, on, on and off the pitch. That's exactly what I te- tell my boys. But, uh, you know, I was maybe too busy with changing citizenship. You know, a lot of things are going on, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I have to regret, that is the only thing that I can regret. But otherwise, the uh, experience with national team the management with the players, uh, of course, Chetri, Mangi, Nandi, Paul. I mean, fantastic boys, man, Nabi. Yeah. 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 They accept me, accepted me pretty well. And uh, we were having a good time, you know. So, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. Experience for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heartwarming really story, if anything. That. Yeah, I really appreciate that you also, yeah. um, you know, are able to share this. And because, like I said, this hasn't happened before, it's really special for us. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. I think I think we'll take we'll take a minute to try to to think about what Arata is when, when he played for India. If you haven't seen some of his games, just go look it up. I'm sure you'll find it in some corner of YouTube. It's it's always there. Everything is there online. But we'll just be back after this. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Paytm Money. Do definitely check out our social media accounts. We've been doing some really cool stuff over there. There are a bunch of recommendations from hosts. I think you'll really enjoy the content that we're putting out there. And make sure you don't miss your favorite shows. Cyrus says has been putting out some great stuff, as is the Prakati Podcast, All About Policy. has been doing some really, really fun stuff. The guys of Football Shootball and Football Twaddle are continuing to release episodes as well, which are really interesting. Pesa Vasanupam has been having like guest after guest just killing it. Pulia Bazi has been doing so well. Postcards from Nowhere. All these shows are really, really doing well. And really, really putting out great stuff. Appreciate what the efforts that the hosts are putting in in the lockdown. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff. And with that, let's continue with your show. So welcome back to Football Shootball. We are with the Arata Izumi, an Indian football superstar from the late 2000s and the early 2010s. We're talking about now we'll get into Arata's best, best parts of his career when he was at Pune Football Club. And here is, I'm assuming, Arata, that this was your, your crowning moments in 2009-10 when you were arguably the best player in the league. In 2012-13, y'all came so heartbreakingly close. Was, was was it second where Pune FC finished that, that season? Yeah. Where yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. came yeah, so yeah, close. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, and you lost to, I think, Churchill. And I think a lot yeah, of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and I think a lot of people thought that maybe y'all, y'all deserve to be champions. Y'all played some of the best football. Yeah. But mm. I think the Churchill ended up drawing more games than you. That, that was pretty much mm. why they won. But j- just give us an overall view on how your experience at Pune Football Club comes across. Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, I played in uh, quite a lot of the clubs. But one of the most professional side, I mean, I must say, the management was there. <laughs> yeah, first year, we were expected kind of I mean, we had a good team. That was the first year in the uh, first division in the FC, right? Just came mm-hmm. up from second division. And we had a quite a high hope about us. And I think we were playing good. But uh, somehow we started, I think, eight draw continuously or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And of course, in the end, we were in a good position, but uh, not as, as much as what we expected. But personally, I played pretty well. And then the second year, third year, fourth year, we always had a good team, but somehow we could not uh, win the titles. That is the uh, biggest uh, setback for us, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you know what it reminds me of? Arata, you obviously won't know this, but we spoke to uh, Joe Morrison, who is the presenter on 10 sports for the Champions League. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we spoke to him in our previous episode too, this, in the two previous oh. episodes. Yeah. So he was our guest and he's a Newcastle fan. And when mm. he was talking about Newcastle, those periods where they just missed out on the Premier League, mm. he seems extremely similar. So, listener, if you're listening in, go listen to the previous episode as well and listen to the Arata episode as well. Like, <laughs> do all four back to back. But it was very, very similar. And they played some awesome attacking football that, that, you guys, that, that you guys did as well. But I want to touch upon one thing. And now this is, I know, personal to you. But you had one of the best, I think, moments of your life. I think you met your wife at Pune FC and nothing can beat that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, lucky me. Yeah, lucky you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's her name? She was, I think, the physio there, right? Yeah, so she was uh, with under-19 team. So mm-hmm. it was first year, 2009 itself, right? So I was injured and uh, the senior team's uh, physio was uh, busy with other, other commitment or whatever. And... Uh, I was sent to her 
on the. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's nice. That's nice. And you hit it off. Uh, but, <laughs> and uh, so, so the one thing I I like that you mentioned the under nineteen team because we we went actually to the youth academy. Yep. And yeah. I don't think at that stage we had ever expected a youth academy mm. to be so professional in India. Mm. Like it was it was awesome. So in fact you mentioned the senior team physio I forget his name but he was at our contact at Pune FC if you can what was yeah. his name? And I how you work Tarek. I don't know. Tarek. Tarek. Yeah. Tarek. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah and he, and he works he works in England now, correct? He's at Chelsea oh. I think now. He doesn't? No, no, no. Dalek is here only. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, then I think we're getting confused with with the people. But anyway, we went there to the youth academy. This was, ah, uh, this was somewhere on the outskirts of Pune again, even further than yeah, Panewadi. I forget the name. I forget the name. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was, mm. yeah, it was, it was an awesome, awesome setup. That that club had something going for it. Yeah, things uh, seem to have that much of a youth setup, and it was uh, showing the right way to Indian football. Really unfortunate that club has to be shut down. I know, and this I think uh, uh, a friend of football should ball asked this question, and mm. I think you know him as well, Devangan Basu. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll tell him. I'll tell him you said hi. So he told me that you have to ask Rata this. He's like, what? Mm. And I know that he loves the city of Pune, considering you're there right now. Do you feel a certain sense of sadness that Pune doesn't have a football club anymore? The ISL club currently does not exist. It's gone off to Jamshedpur. So. Pune, 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 Pune Football Club has shut down. Pune City FC does not exist. Does it? Does it hurt a bit that that the city does not have a football culture as such? Yeah, and I don't believe uh, Pune doesn't have footballing culture, uh, but just the clubs could not uh, sustain, I guess. But the Pune FC, I think, tried the best. I mean, the mm-hmm. uh, the club which was engaging with local supporters, you know schools and uh, everything I think put a lot of uh, efforts in that but uh, to be honest uh, I didn't see much from other uh, Pune clubs uh, of course Shivajians have a great name in, in Pune it's yeah. Not, uh, yeah, from beginning but that was another unfortunate case because of lots of things happened you know what yeah, yeah. Uh, Pune City uh, Pune City also tried their best I believe but I think Pune City could have done better I think in terms of like you know gathering more for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, when, whenever I go to our circus or Pune for football tournament, and all, you see the park, it's not a stadium, but a small ground, but it's packed by you know, local people. They love football, man. But yeah. we just, yeah, but I think uh, we could not gather all those people, so it looks like Pune doesn't have football culture, I know. But uh, I believe uh, there's a lot of culture in Pune, and uh, yes, I feel sad that there's no football club, but I'm hoping. Yeah. Probably some of the investors are listening to this and probably they are ready to put the master money. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. hope so too. So I remember when we were in college, Shivram is a Pune kar. I mean, he's a Delhiite, but he used to live in Pune. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I remember in college when we were in Pune, Shivram and I wanted to start a football club. Then. <laughs> <laughs> mm, please. Yeah, here you go. Coach, coach, coach. Coach, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you get, you get a coach and a physio. See. Yeah. See. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> One part. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's that's awesome. On on that happy note, we'll end episode one. We'll come back with Arata next week again. For for episode two, again once again, thank you for listening to Football Should Ball. See you next week. So if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM Network. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast dot com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Fickleberry Han on Twitter and Instagram. That's Huckleberry Finn, but Fickle. And if you want to reach out to me, I am Sapre on Twitter and G Sapre on Instagram. You can reach out to me at Irant, which is I Y E R A N T on Twitter and Instagram. This is football. Should ball recognize? Advertising is dead. Yep, you heard me right. Advertising is dead. We're all in the content business now. Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc., etc. It's all content, and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content, and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. Tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. Yeah. 
Are you looking for India's most awesome cricket podcast? Are you now tired of listening to the same old guys drone on about cricket everywhere? Edges and Sledges is a weekly cricket podcast hosted by three fans of the game, Varun, DJ, and myself, Ashwin. It was established in early 2018, has over 60 episodes now, and is of course now proud to be on the IVM Podcast Network. Each week, we get together from three different time zones, the USA, the UK, and Singapore, and we talk about things from the world of cricket, with a focus on Indian cricket. We often interview special guests from all around the world, including former cricketers and cricket media personalities. So check out Edges and Sledges, the cricket podcast, now on the IVM Network.